Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Usma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Smog reduces visibility in northern India as cold wave hits. US slams Taliban over dangerous order, calls for reversal. And Sikh devotees offer prayers in India to celebrate birthday of their 10th spiritual leader. And now for all the details. Cold wave conditions and dense fog continued to make life difficult for people in northern India as people were seen lighting bonfires to keep themselves warm in chilly weather. South Asia's winters are not as cold as other regions, but the millions of poor here are hit harder because they live in the open and do not have enough warm clothes and often die. Cold wave conditions and dense fog on Thursday continue to make life difficult for the people in part across northern India. A thick layer of fog engulfed Gorakhpur city in India's Uttar Pradesh as people faced reduced visibility and biting cold making the lives of people difficult. People stepped out dressed in multiple layers of clothing to protect themselves from the cold. Residents demanded that schools should be shut immediately owing to cold conditions. और टेम्परेचर धीरे धीरे टेम्परेचर भी गिर गया है हम जान रहे हैं दस या बारह से ऊपर टेम्परेचर नहीं होगा गलन बहुत ज़्यादा है बच्चों के लिए खासकर और खासकर छोटे बच्चों के लिए बहुत ज़्यादा गलन है हम लोग को तो थोड़ा बहुत सरवाइव कर जाएंगे थोड़ा बड़े हो गए हैं लेकिन छोटे बच्चों के लिए बहुत गलन है ठंड बहुत ज़्यादा बढ़ गई है अमिर दी चिली टेम्परेचर दी फुटफॉल इन दी रिलीजियस सिटी ऑफ नॉर्दर्न हरिद्वार हैज ऑल्सो बीन रिड्यूस डेविटीज एंड रेजिडेंट्स कंप्लेंट Unlike in previous years, the administration has not done any arrangements to help the devotees. हर द्वार आए हैं। यहाँ पर ठंडी, सीत लहरी है। यहाँ पर आग की व्यवस्था तापने की नहीं है। अभी है, कम है भी। The dense fog has also limited vehicle movement in the cities of Jalandhar and Patna. People were lighting bonfires to keep themselves warm in cold conditions. Entire North India is currently witnessing a cold wave and dense foggy conditions due to which visibility dipped massively according to the Indian Meteorological Department. South Asia's winters are not cold but the millions of poor here are hit harder because they live in the open and do not have enough warm clothes and often die. In news from Pakistan. Pakistan's opposition PTI party senior leader Fawad Chaudhry on Wednesday linked the resurgence of terror incidents across Pakistan to the reversal of Imran Khan's Afghan policy. Fawad claimed that Imran Khan was the only respected Pakistan leader in Afghanistan because he was not involved in the killing of Afghans and said if conditions deteriorated in Afghanistan, it can have implications in Pakistan. Amid the renewed attacks by Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan (TTP), PTI senior leader Fawad Chaudhry has called the resurgence of terror incidents in Pakistan a result of the reversal of PTI's Afghan policy. Addressing a press conference in Islamabad, Chaudhry said, "If conditions deteriorated in Afghanistan, it can have implications in Pakistan as well." He also claimed Imran Khan was the only respected Pakistani leader in Afghanistan because his hands were not tainted with blood of Afghans. Taking a dig at the incumbent coalition government, the former minister said even allies of Pakistan like China and Saudi Arabia have issued travel advisories for their citizens in Pakistan. हम एक बड़े मंसूबे के तहत जो है कंप्रिहेंसिव टॉक्स के जरिए हम आगे बढ़ रहे थे। पीटीआई की जो पॉलिसी थी फान पॉलिसी थी वो पाकिस्तान की अशरों के बाद एक बहुत मुनज़म पॉलिसी थी जो हम चला रहे थे एक तरफ हम इफानिस्तान की जो हकुमत है और वहाँ के जो बड़े रानुमा हैं मुल्ला हैबतुल्ला हैं मुल्ला याकूब हैं हकानीज़ हैं ये जो ये एक ही पाकिस्तानी लीडर की वहाँ 
باقی ہماری لیڈرشپ تو انوالو ہے ساری افغانستان میں جس طرح سے امریکہ کے ساتھ مل کے وہاں خون کی ہولی کھیلی گئی اس لیے عمران خان کی صرف وہاں پہ عزت ہے مین وائل پاکستان سنٹیریو منسٹر رانا سانا اللہ ہیز اٹیکٹ خیبر پختون خوا کلیبنگ ایٹ لیسٹ سیون تھاؤزینڈ ٹو ٹین تھاؤزینڈ ٹی ٹی پی ملیٹنس آر ایکٹیو ان دا ریجن اٹس دی فیلیئر آف دا پروینشل گورنمنٹس دیٹ دوز ہو لیڈ ڈاؤن آرمس آر ایکٹیو اگین رپورٹ سجیسٹ اوور دا پاسٹ ویک اینڈ پاکستان وٹنسڈ ملٹیپل اٹیکس بائی ٹی ٹی پی دی فریش اٹیکس کم آفٹر ٹی ٹی پیز ودرال فرام اسیز فائر ود دی گورنمنٹ The band outfit is not directly associated with the Afghan Taliban but pledges allegiance to them. Moving on, residents of Pakistan administered Kashmir have said they are fed up with frequent price hikes amid the ongoing economic crisis that has particularly hit the poor. Locals say the illegally occupied region which is already marginalized has borne the major brunt of unfair taxes while they see no policies for their welfare. Residents of Pakistan administered Kashmir have said they are fed up of skyrocketing prices of all essentials including fruits and vegetables while the government has failed to control inflation local traders of fruits and vegetables said the ongoing economic crisis has severely affected their businesses while transportation and other costs have risen over all this the authorities come up with weird policies to save energy including the recent shutting down of markets on Sundays a shopkeeper said us wajah se hum chutti karne ke haq mein nahi kyunki hamare bahut sare kyunki hamara daily routine ka kaam hota hai ye rozmarra ki khane ki cheez hai agar hamare kapda jute ya is tarah koi aur apna hardware ki shops hoti to hum lazmi chutti karne ke haq mein hote ek to mehngai bhi itni hai ke har banda afford nahi kar sakta hai theek hai sabzi sabzi itni mehngi hai abhi ja ke tomato thoda sasta hua hai to pyaaz to kafi arsa se aap hi ja raha hai uska din ba din rate upar ja raha hai niche nahi aa raha پاکستان ان ریسنٹ منتھس ہیز بین وٹنسنگ اکنامک چیلنجز اوئنگ ٹو اٹس انکمپیٹنٹ پالیسیز لوکل سے دی آکیپائڈ ریجن آف پاکستان ایڈمنسٹریڈ کشمیر وچ از آلریڈی مارجنلائزڈ ہیز بون دی میجر برانڈ آف انفیئر ٹیکسز وائل دیر از نو ڈیولپمنٹ ان سائٹ سنس دی پاسٹ مینی ایئرز ان نیوز فرام افغانستان As the Taliban has ordered a new ban on women in Afghanistan, U.S. Secretary Antony Blinken has slammed the Taliban's impression of women and asked the Taliban to reverse their decision of banning women employees of NGOs from the workplace. Blinken stressed that millions of Afghans depend on humanitarian assistance for their survival. After the recent decree by the Taliban on women in Afghanistan, United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken has slammed the Taliban's impression of women and has asked NGOs to step up. Taking to his Twitter handle, Blinken stressed that millions of Afghans depend on humanitarian assistance for their survival and asked the Taliban to reverse their decision of banning women employees of NGOs from the workplace. Blinken's statement comes after the Taliban on Saturday ordered all local and foreign NGOs to stop female employees from coming to work in the country. Since the ban on higher education for women has been imposed by the Taliban, women across Afghanistan cities have been protesting and raising slogans against it. Since the return of the Taliban to Afghanistan in August 2021, the alleged systematic attacks on the rights of women and girls and use of violence including torture and enforced disappearances have created a culture of fear in Afghan society. A 19-year-old Rohingya woman who survived a perilous journey across the Indian Ocean in a rickety boat shared her experience while crying with relief. She was among 174 Rohingya Muslims on board the boat that washed up on the shores of Indonesia's Aceh province this week, all fleeing poverty and persecution. Fatima bin Ismail A 19-year-old Rohingya woman who survived a perilous journey across the Indian Ocean in a rickety boat held a phone with shaking hands while on a video call with relatives crying with relief. She was among 174 Rohingya Muslims on board. The boat that washed up on the shores of Indonesia's Aceh province this week, all fleeing poverty and persecution, hoping for a better life or to reunite with family. 
The group, originally of around 200 people, set sail from Bangladesh in November. Their boat soon sprang a leak and drifted for 40 days before reaching Indonesia. At least 20 people died on the way, with some leaping off the boat in desperation after it broke down, fearing it would sink. The Rohingya are a Muslim people from mainly Buddhist Myanmar where they have long suffered repression. Around 800,000 were forced into Bangladesh since a crackdown by Myanmar's military in 2017. But thousands have fled in an increasingly desperate conditions in refugee camps there. Many try to reach Muslim-majority Malaysia and Indonesia, which has seen nearly 500 Rohingya reach its shores in the past six weeks, according to UN Refugee Agency. Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, on Thursday began the three-day teaching session in India's eastern Bodh Gaya town. Bodh Gaya, which is considered one of the holiest places by the Buddhists, received at least 50,000 to 60,000 devotees from India and the world, who gathered in adoration of the spiritual leader to listen to the sermons. Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama on Thursday began the three-day teaching session in India's eastern Bodh Gaya town. The teaching session began with Tibetan Buddhist rituals and was followed by special prayers for world peace which were conducted by the His Holiness. Bodh Gaya, which is considered one of the holiest places by the Buddhists, received at least 50,000 to 60,000 devotees from India and the world who gathered in adoration of the spiritual leader to listen to the sermons. Oh, I feel so touched, so moved. Every time I cried, with, from the bottom of my heart because Dalai Lama, since I was very young, um, you know, some Chinese guy said he, 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 he loves war, but it's not true, totally lies. The three-day session, which will culminate on December 31, is being held under tight security and surveillance. India recently tightened its COVID-19 norms for international arrivals, especially keeping in view the rising cases in several countries, including China. Earlier this week, four foreigners who were scheduled to attend the Dalai Lama's teaching program were found to be coronavirus positive during random testing at Gaya International Airport. Sikh devotees across India on Thursday celebrated the 356th birth anniversary of their 10th spiritual leader, Guru Gobind Singh. Devotees offered prayers at the famous Golden Temple and pondered upon the spiritual leader's teaching to mark the occasion. Sikhs across India on Thursday celebrated the 356th birth anniversary of their 10th spiritual leader, Guru Gobind Singh. Thousands of devotees gathered to offer prayers at the holiest shrine of Sikhism, Golden Temple in Amritsar city of India's Punjab state. Devotees also took a dip in the holy lake of the temple. The shrine is regarded as one of the holiest of five shrines, the seat of the Sikh authority and is one of the two shrines located outside the northern Punjab province. Guru Gobind Singh Ji Dai Jan Din Aaj Te Parvarna Aaye Hoye Hain Te Darshan Kite Ya Harman Dazaar De Te Badi Khushi Hoye Hain Similar scenes were witnessed in the capital, New Delhi, where devotees offered prayers while sitting in front of the shrine. The 10th Guru of Sikhism, Guru Gobind Singh, was born in Patna city of India. 
One of his major contributions include mobilizing Sikhs into a martial community for the protection of their religious beliefs during Mughal rule. Sikhs form about 2% of the nearly 1.3 billion population of India and are largely concentrated in the northern Indian province of Punjab and the national capital New Delhi. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.